Chapter 1 All living organisms show some basic characteristics that qualify them to be a part of the living world. They need food, water, air, they show growth and movement, they are able to produce their own kind, they age and die. Of all these characteristics, the most important factor that helps life to go on is energy. How would one feel if one has to go without food for a day? Imagine if the same happens for a week or more, the organism will not be able to survive. Thus, in order to survive, it is important to nourish the body. This is done through a constant mode of nutrition or the process of taking in food and drink by living organisms to obtain the energy required for the daily activities. Different organisms need different kind of nutrients for their growth. Animals feed on smaller animals or they depend on plants for their fruit. Similarly, the nutrient requirement of the human body that includes five basic nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals in addition to water and roughage is supplied through animal and plant sources of food. It can therefore be concluded that both animals and human beings depend on plants for food. Ever since the beginning of life, it has been shown through scientific research that plants like algae were the first inhabitants of the earth. Like plants, these algae were capable of synthesizing their own food through the process of photosynthesis and gave out oxygen as a byproduct which enriched the earth's atmosphere. The word autotrophic can be understood as auto, self and tropos nutrition. The mode of nutrition in which the organism prepares its own food is called autotrophic mode of nutrition. Green plants are the only living organisms that prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight and simple raw materials like carbon dioxide and water. The process, also called photosynthesis, takes place in the presence of a green pigment called chlorophyll. It is present in the leaves in elliptical structures called chloroplasts. The chlorophyll absorbs the light essential for the reaction. Raw Materials for Photosynthesis the carbon dioxide required for the reaction is obtained from the air. It enters the leaf through stomata. The apparatus which causes opening and closing of stomata present on the underside of the leaf comprises of two guard cells. Their function is to carry out exchange of gases. They give out oxygen released in chloroplast as a result of photosynthesis and take in carbon dioxide. Let us now carry on a simple experiment. Aim to show that carbon dioxide is necessary for the process of photosynthesis. Place a plotted plant in absolute dark for a day. The destarches the plant. Now, select a healthy leaf from the plant. Place potassium hydroxide in a conical flask so that it absorbs all carbon dioxide from it. Gently take the selected leaf and insert it into the flask with the help of a split cork. Leave the plant in the sun for a few hours and test for the presence of starch. Observation, you will observe that the leaf from the conical flask will not turn blue-black in the test for presence of starch. The other important raw material for photosynthesis is water. The roots of the plants absorb water from the soil and transport it to the leaves of the plant through channels called xylem. After the photosynthetic reaction, the excess water is expelled from the leaves again through the stomata by a process called transpiration. As the leaves lose water, a suction pressure is created which causes more water to be absorbed by the roots. Let us do another experiment. Aim to show the transportation of water by xylem in the upward direction. Materials Yellow food color white carnation flowers, a tall transparent vase or a beaker. Method, add water in the vase or beaker and add food color to it. Now, place the carnations in the colored water. Observe after a few hours. Observation, the experiment shows that the water is transported in the upward direction by the xylem. The carbohydrates produced during the process of photosynthesis are transported to various parts of the plant body through channels called phloem. Some of this may be used immediately while the extra is stored as starch. Aim to test the presence of starch in leaves. Method Take two similar potted plants, 
plant one in complete darkness for three days and keep the other in bright sunlight. Pluck a leaf from both the plants and boil separately for about five minutes to soften it. Now, dip the leaves in separate test tubes containing alcohol. Place these test tubes in beakers containing water and warm the water gently until all the chlorophyll from the leaves is dissolved. Now, spread these leaves in a petri dish. Use a drop of iodine solution on each leaf to test the presence of starch. What do you observe? This activity also shows that light is necessary for the process of photosynthesis, which leads to the production of starch. Let us now understand the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The term heterotrophic can be understood as heteron, other and trophos nutrition. The mode of nutrition in which the organism depends on another organism for its nutrition is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Human beings, animals and non-green plants depend directly or indirectly on green plants for food. The dependence of heterotrophs on autotrophs for nutrition explains the existence of various food chains in our environment. Grass, Deer, Lion Heterotrophic plants may be divided into the following categories according to their mode of deriving nutrition. These plants thrive on the body of another green plant to obtain nutrition. In a parasitic relationship, it is only the parasitic plant that benefits. The host plant, over a period of time, begins to wither away. Parasitic plants develop special roots called hostria, which penetrate into the tissues of the host plant. It functions to absorb the nutrition prepared by the host plant. The word saprophyte can be understood as sapro, rotten, and phyton, plants. Thus, saprophytes are plants that obtain their nutrition from the decaying plant matter like rotting leaves and twigs. The roots of saprophytes contain fungi that are capable of digesting the dead and decaying matter, which can be converted into useful material for the plant. Mushrooms can also be seen growing on rotting plant waste during the rainy season. Many mushrooms are edible and relished as a delicacy. Yeast is also a form of fungus that is used in fermenting dosa, idli, bhatura and cake batters. The amazing plants like the Venus fly trap and the pitcher plant are actually carnivorous feeding on the insects. They have brilliantly colored petals and very strong odors that attract insects. Venus flytrap flower is a very sensitive to touch and as the insect sits on it, it immediately folds, consuming the insect with the help of digestive enzymes present in it. When the insect sits on the leaf of pitcher plant, it slips into a long tube that contains the digestive juices. The slippery sides ensure that the insect cannot crawl out. The lid also closes further ensuring that the insect is completely trapped. Such insectivorous plants generally grow in soils that are deficient in calcium and nitrogen as in marshy areas. Though they are capable of photosynthesis but they compensate for the nutrition deficit through their insect diet. The sundew plant leaves have tentacles with a sticky substance that causes the insect to stick to it. The sticky substance, also called mucilage, then digests the insect. In a symbiotic relationship, no plant can survive independent of the other. For example, certain fungi live in the roots of trees in a symbiotic system called mycorrhizae. The tree provides nutrients to the fungus and in return the fungus absorb water and mineral salts from the soil. Replenishing the lost nutrients Year after year, crops growing on the same plot of land consume the nutrients from the soil. Thus, there arises a need to add fertilizers and manures to the field. While manures are naturally made from decaying plant waste, fertilizers are chemically synthesized in laboratories and are enriched in nutrients like nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. Let us now recapitulate the important terms for the lesson. Nutrition, the process of taking in food and drink by living organisms. Autotrophic nutrition, the mode of nutrition in which the organism prepares its own food. 
transpiration, the process by which excess water is expelled through the stomata of the leaves. Heterotrophic nutrition, the mode of nutrition in which the organism depends on another organism for its nutrition. Food chain, the series showing dependence of one organism on another for food. Food web, many interconnected food chains together make up the food web. Parasitic plants, the plants which depend on other green plants for their survival. Saprophytic plants, the plants that obtain their nourishment from decaying plants. Symbiotic plants, plants that benefit from each other and live in harmony. Let us quickly recapitulate the important points from the chapter. It is important for all organisms to nourish themselves. Algae were the most primitive form of life on earth that were capable of photosynthesis. The chlorophyll present in chloroplast on the cells absorb essential light for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a two-stage process. The light reaction involves absorption of sunlight whereas the dark reaction involves synthesis of starch. Stomata is responsible for exchange of gases. The carbon dioxide enters the leaf and oxygen is expelled. Xylem is responsible for the transport of water and phloem for food throughout the plant. The extra food in plants is stored as starch. Parasitic plants develop special roots called hostria to penetrate the tissue of the host plant. Saprophytes derive nutrition from decaying plant matter like rotting leaves. Carnivorous plants are very brightly colored and emit very strong odor to attract insects. Symbiotic plants live together, sharing shelter and nourishment. Manure is made from decaying plant waste. Fertilizers are chemically synthesized.